welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny Rios for those that don't know me. Thank you for joining today. This is my puppy updated video. But today we're gonna talk about all the things that I've learned since getting a little puppy and just information that I wanted to update from my previous video. If you have not seen my previous video of everything you need to know before buying a little puppy, make sure to check that video out and then come back to this one. Now, I don't really go back on any of the things that I said in my other video, but there is stuff that I did learn and I had some comments left on my last video that were not so positive. So I kind of wanted to address those and let you guys know the proper facts and everything that I've learned since then. Peppa. So this is my little puppy. She's grown a little bit since the last video, but yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy journey. It's kind of like having a child like you. I mean, not that I have one, but I would assume that you think you know what you're doing. And then once you get a little child, it's crazy. It's been so fun, but I've definitely learned a lot of things and she wants to go and roam around. So say bye, baby though. Say bye. I love you, baby. Okay. I'm going to let her be. All right. So it's been about two months since I did my first puppy all the things that you need to know video there is some different things that i have changed and that i do differently now and just things that i've learned that didn't work for me that work for me now now i did get a lot of negative comments and some constructive criticism in there and i really appreciate it because i really did learn a lot and you know you go into something thinking that you know everything but obviously as you go through you learn so much more and Peppa's making a lot of noise. Peppa, come here, baby. I got tons and tons of comments of people saying, don't hit your dog. It's basically like hitting a baby. They don't know any better. Don't do that. And so that was kind of like my main first thing. Now, in my previous video, I wasn't saying like hit really hard. I kind of was just saying like do a little pat and say no so they know not to do that. Now, some people were saying like that's not effective because they don't know what that means. And it's basically like hitting a little baby. They just don't know any better which I totally agree with however with my last puppy I remember we would get some little newspaper and wrinkle it up and every time she would pee somewhere else we would just hit her like one time say no and then put her in the proper place that she needed to pee or poop and smear some of like the pee from wherever she peed into the actual place that she needed to potty so that worked well for us and that's kind of like why i kind of said that and stuck to that however peppa is really really tiny and of course me hitting her i just felt so bad in my heart i was like oh my god i'm so sorry and i felt really bad but my friend ended up telling me to just give her treats every time she did pee in the pad so for the longest time i would only put pee pads in my bathroom but she spends most of her time in the living room. Now I put a pee pad in the living room. So if she is out there, you know, she can pee and poop out there. Now for the longest time, she would actually pee and poop on the rug and it would frustrate me because I'm like, Peppa, you know, like you need to pee on the pad. So now whenever she pees or poops on the rug, I say no, grab her, put her on the pad. And I think now she knows like, okay, this is where I need to pee or poop. And she's been doing really well. So now I don't actually hit her, but every time she does pee or ends up pooping on the pad, I give her a treat and she just gets so excited. And like now I think she knows that that's where, you know, she needs to do her potty. That was kind of a lot of the constructive criticism that some people were saying to just give them treats and reward them if they do pee in the right spot. So now we're in a routine where like in the morning, I'll put her in the bathroom, she'll pee in the bathroom with the pee pads. And then whenever she goes into the living room, she actually pees and poops on the pads and I give her a treat. Although sometimes I think she's scamming me because she'll only pee like a little drop and then stare at me. And then I'm like, okay, I'll give you a treat. And now she does that. But I did realize like in the beginning when I would say no and hit her and put her on the pad, I think she learned what no meant and like just me being mad at her that now if I'm like no or like she pees somewhere else and she knows she's not supposed to pee there and I say no to her, she runs to the pad. So I think, I mean, not, I wouldn't say like hitting her, but just like letting them know like do not do this from the beginning and then rewarding them later on when they do pee or poop on the pad is really helpful. And I mean, now she just 
truly only goes on there. She barely has had an accident. So I'm really proud of her and she's just doing so well. So that was kind of like one of the main things I, that I learned. Now, another huge thing that people were coming for me was her eating schedule and what I gave her to eat. Now, I've seen tons and tons of videos and TikTok videos where people actually give their dogs real food. Now, of course, it's not any type of real food. It's like strictly certain things, but you are able to give them. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but there are tons of actual fresh food that people produce now for dogs. So instead of kibble, it's like fresh food that they deliver at your door that's made with real food. So some people that were saying only give them kibble, don't give them real food. I don't know what you're talking about because a lot of vets say that real food is actually really good for them and very nutritious for them. So in the beginning, I was giving her a mix of bell peppers, uh, hard boiled eggs, and a little bit of chicken. And then I would just mix it up and put it on her kibble. And I just feel like that gave her the nutrients she needed when she was a little puppy. I obviously don't do that anymore because it's kind of like a lot of work. But we actually found some food that she really liked from Target. And it's kind of like in their dog section in a refrigerator. And she really, really liked that. It's soft food made with real chicken and vegetables. So she really, really likes that. But We've tried different kibble and I realized that she really likes this kibble from the dollar store that's natural. I'll leave it down below so you guys can look it up. It's actually really good and she really likes that. So I've been giving her that with a mix of her Merrick kibble and that that she doesn't really enjoy that much and she gets bored of it. But whenever she gets hungry, she obviously eats that. So I don't always give her real food, but I feel like whenever they are puppies, they do need those nutrients and giving her that food that she needed was very important. Now, a lot of other people were coming at me saying, you're not supposed to leave kibble out for them all day long, which I totally understand. And I know, and I know it's really important to have little schedules for them and everything. But for me and her, it's just so hard to stay, stick to a schedule. I've tried, but we just do so many things. We go out a lot. We do different things every single day. So it's kind of hard to stick to a schedule. The only thing that she for sure does in the morning is eat. So as soon as she pees, I put her out in the living room and she eats her little kibble. So other than that, I do take her kibble with me all the time. But when we are out and about, she actually doesn't even eat. She only eats at home. So it's kind of difficult to stick to a schedule. So I know a lot of people are saying that you have to stick to a schedule. And I feel like that is probably better for bigger dogs. However, my little dogs that I've always had never really had a schedule just because they weren't just at home all every day. I mean, I don't even have an eating schedule for myself. So it's kind of hard for me to have like a specific one for her. But whenever she's hungry, I know that she is. And whenever she's thirsty, I know that she is. So I'll give her, you know, the food and the water that she wants. And then whenever she needs to pee, she's very like, I don't know, she smells around and runs in little circles. So I know when she needs to potty. And then I, you know, obviously put the, her pee pads out for her so she can do that. But yeah, I mean, that was the main thing. A lot of people were coming at me for that. Now, one of the main questions people ask me all the time is where did I get her? Where did I buy her? And I feel so bad not responding to people or not saying where I got her because I mean, when I do respond, I just say a breeder because I really did get her from a breeder here in Dallas. My thing with that, it's like, I don't want to give out the lady's information because I don't want so many people to reach out to her and then her you know breed these dogs in an unethical way or feel that she could make a lot of money so she's just gonna breed all these little dogs like i don't know i just feel kind of bad doing that so that's why i have not really given people a lot of information on where i got her because i just feel bad i don't know i know that's kind of selfish i get it when i was looking for a little yorkie i was making sure i was getting it from someone that knew what they were doing, making sure it was not a puppy mill, making sure, you know, they were taken care of, the parents are taken care of. Like, I kind of did a lot of research before getting any little dog, and one time I was about to buy a dog from this person on Instagram, and they were being really shady. They didn't want to FaceTime me. They didn't want to show me pictures of the parents, which is already kind of like red flag. And it was just really fishy. Now, another thing is that Yorkie was going to be like 750. If you're buying a little Yorkie for under a couple thousand dollars, I 
strongly suggest to look elsewhere because yes i get you don't want to spend a lot of money but these little dogs need a lot of care and they are really expensive if they're breeding them correctly just because the they're so small that the parents have a lot of risk so yeah 750 dollars. that means those people do not care about those little dogs and are just bringing the parents don't care if the parents die don't care about the conditions of the puppies so make sure that you if you are getting a little dog it's not from a puppy mill making sure they send you pictures of the parents i felt very comfortable with the lady i got her from because the lady came to me and she was really nice she like showed me peppa before i even bought her she was telling me all about her that she's very like spunky gosh she's over here barking i don't know what she's barking at i have no idea what she's doing i think she's looking at her reflection and yeah i mean she showed me to her and i was like i was like oh my god she's so cute she was a little furball and i mean i fell in love with her but i definitely did ask a lot of questions the lady was really nice she was telling me that she actually had other yorkies and you know she had a little micro yorkie that lived 15 years because i kind of asked her like how long is their lifespan and she said that they do live a very long time so i was kind of like okay i felt better about that and the lady was so nice you know she was like take your time i'll bring her to you and she answered every question i had over text like i just had a lot of peace about it and she was really nice and she wasn't trying to push me to buy the dog um she kind of just waited on me to like reach out to her and you know peppa was a couple thousand dollars but i felt really good about it because the lady didn't want to really knock down on the price which i feel like that's actually kind of like a good sign if they're not giving you a dog for super cheap because i feel like when they do it's like they don't really care and they're just trying to make more money and they have all these dogs that they don't they don't care they just want to like they just want someone to buy them i got a comment that made me feel really bad but basically someone said that micro yorkies and teacup yorkies are unethically breeded just because yorkies are supposed to be only one size and i totally get that and and the yorkies that i had back in the day were actually just like a normal little size with peppa i mean i don't know i don't know the logistics of how they breed tiny little dogs but i felt very comfortable from the lady that i got her from and for me i just knew that i needed a tiny dog to be able to take her everywhere with me so when i got that comment i did feel kind of bad because i never really thought about it i actually really thought that sometimes yorkies just became that small and sometimes you know if, if two parents are small of course they're gonna breed little tiny yorkies but i didn't think it would be it was in a way that they would like unethically breed them so i should have done more research on that because i definitely did feel bad when i saw that comment but i mean what i mean she's here so there's nothing i can do about that now but of course you know now looking forward and looking at it teacups and micro yorkies and all those little teacup dogs probably aren't breeded ethically maybe they are later on but maybe from the get-go and how they became teacups was not in the best way and i totally could admit to that and you know say that i was at fault in that but you know she's here so now we're just moving forward and i just want you guys to make sure that you do the research that is needed in order to buy your little puppy and yeah i mean that's basically kind of all the things that i've learned that are new that i feel like i really wanted to address and update since my last video but thank you guys for the comments let me know if you have any other questions i would love to answer them for you guys and you know thank you for your constructive criticism although some of it was negative a lot of it i did take to heart and did more research on it so i'm very thankful for you guys but that's it peppa come here baby thanks for joining if you did like this video make sure to do that because we would love to do more videos for you guys and also make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel i've gotten a lot of new subscribers since my last video with peppa so i kind of wanted to do an updated one why are you so with me baby stop baby so yeah, thanks guys for watching and we'll see you guys next time.